Hello. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. All good. All right. So uh, let me share my screen. Let's see. Oh wait. Okay. Can everyone see it? Um, yes. 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 Okay, great. Um, so first of all, very uh, excited to be here. That was a fun chat. And um, so today the talk is titled The New View. Um, so last month I gave a talk at uh, VJS London um, on the reflecting on some of the things that we did after the launch of Vue 3, which was already over a year ago. And right now we are at a place where we are really close to launching our new documentation. And the new documentation carries the purpose of presenting some of the, uh, uh, it's essentially a combination point for a lot of the work that we did in the past year to sort of refresh Vue, not just the core, but some of the accompanying pieces of Vue as a framework. And to understand that concept, we kind of need to dial it back a little bit and think when Vue was first introduced to the world, it was just a library. It was just a single script, which is why it's still called Vue.js, right? Um, it was a single script that you can pull in from a CDN and load it into your browser and, and get it working instantly. But as time goes, as web development uh, advances, right, um, we are introducing more and more pieces to Vue. And today, Vue is solidly in the framework territory where we do much more than just the APIs. We, are, we do much more than just a single script you include on your page. Um, Vue as a framework also covers build tools, build tool chains. We have Vue CLI and our uh, configuration on top of Webpack. We have IDE support. Uh, we had the uh, the Vitor uh, extension. We had DevTools extensions. We need extensive documentation. We also have first party libraries for routing, state management, and all that maintained by our core team members. So. It is a much bigger concept um, when we talk about a framework compa compared to um, just the, um, the core runtime itself. So in that sense, when we released Vue 3 last year, that was just an update to the core itself. But the accompanying framework uh, also needs a refresh, also needs to evolve. So a lot of the work that we did in the past year really focused on the framework layer outside of Vue core. Right. Although we also launched, uh, also shipped Vue 3.1 and 3.2, but um, by the end of the year, what I hope we can do is to finally tie all these pieces together to define uh, what a new look of Vue would look. Essentially, where we're thinking of, um, it's still the same framework that we all love, but we are improving and replacing small pieces inside the framework, so it's still the same framework, but you see, when all of these pieces are new, it feels very um, it feels very different in a good way. Okay, so first thing, the new build tool chain. And you know what I'm going to be talking about, right? The new build tool chain is going to be based on Vite, right? So Vite is, I created Vite last year, but now Vite is a community project, which I am really, really proud of. Um, I'm not going to dive too much into the technical side of it. Um, if you're here, you probably already know about it, right? Um, so in short, Vite uh, leverages native ES modules and ES built to give you a blazing fast development experience. Uh, it has hot module replacement that doesn't slow down as the project grows. It stays fast, stays instant. It has minimal configuration compared to Webpack, so you can uh, in most time, most of the time, you can use V directly with minimal configuration without having to wrap it behind layers of configuration. It is also modern by default, which aligns with what V3 does because we are uh, V3 requires ES2015 plus by default. So project aspect, 
Um, Vite is in fact framework agnostic. Although I initially created it for Vue itself, it is now a completely independent project from Vue. Of course, uh, we will always ensure first class Vue support in Vite itself, but Vite is now um, really, it, it is uh, gaining a lot of cross framework buying. We have a lot of co active contributors, community members from other frameworks. Of course, we also have very active members from the Vue side, but um, it is actually great that we have cross framework buying so that we can build a solid foundation uh, because these other framework authors also provide very valuable insights for us to determine what are the important features that we need in Vite uh, and what should belong in the framework layer. Uh, Vite is currently already at over 1.4 million monthly downloads and is growing at a very fast pace. So uh, long story short, if you are starting a new project today, uh, the new default tool chain, uh, we will be recommend, we, uh, we will recommend Vite. So we are going to ship a new scaffolding tool called Create View. Um, so if you don't know, when you name an NPM package called Create-something, so for example, Create-View, right, um, that means you can run NPM init view and NPM will automatically download and execute that package. Uh, so this is the scaffolding tool. It'll essentially replace Vue CLI um, and scaffold a pure Vite-based project. Uh, we will have both Vue 2 and Vue 3 support, so you can uh, pick the version. And we are also planning to move Vue CLI into maintenance mode. Um, so it's still going to work, but it, we will focus more on the new Vite-based tool chains, and Vue CI will only receive critical updates, uh, critical bug fixes. Okay, and the next will be new IDE support. So in the past, uh, most of us have been using the great Vitor extension uh, created by Pingu. So um, it was Vitor was really, really important in the in the past few years of view adoption because uh, it is actually used as one of the most downloaded examples of VS Code extensions. Uh, but as Vue three grows in more into um, grows more integrated with TypeScript, and we have seen more and more users uh, starting to use TypeScript with Vue, we realize that good uh, TypeScript support in the IDE especially in Vue single file components, it's becoming more and more important. So um, we have a new recommended VS Code extension called Volar, uh, created by Johnson, Johnson Chu, um, and it provides first class TypeScript support in Vue single file components. More importantly, it provides a TSX-like template intelligence uh, for our template expressions. It also has support for the latest and greatest script setup syntax. So some of the examples when we talk about type checking for template expressions, it, I literally mean that um, Volar is able to tell you the exact type of an expression when you hover over it, and it will give you uh, it will give you very accurate errors based on TypeScript diagnostics. Um, sometimes even without you having to use TypeScript. Also, uh, Volar also provides child component missing uh, required props check. So if you have a child component ha that has required props and you don't provide those props, you'll see that uh, the message here sometimes can be a bit um, uh, a bit verbose, but as you can see, property message is missing in type empty uh, in, in the object, but required in the merged props. Uh, the idea is it tells you that you are missing the message prop, which is, which is required. It also yells at you if you're passing the wrong type. So um, here, message is expected to be a string type, but if we provide a number, uh, you also get an, an hover, uh, hover error. So this brings view single file components uh, pretty much onto the same DX level as TypeScript itself. So all the expressions, props, and even slots can be checked. Um, so slot checking is a custom feature implemented by Volar. It's not really TypeScript based, but still, if you have defined a slot in your child component and um, you're passing a slot of a run name, for example, uh, you're passing a slot name that doesn't exist, Volar will also detect that and warn you against it. Okay, 
So um, Volar will be the new recommended extension, especially if you're using Vue 3 and TypeScript. The next is new command line TypeScript integration, right? So in the past, one of the pain points um, uh, with, when using TypeScript with Vue uh, was uh, being able to type check expressions inside your templates. And now uh, with the IDE extensions, we're able to do that. But how about the command line, right? So uh, in fact, Volar provides an additional tool called Vue TSC. So this is a command line tool that wraps TSC. So it it requires TypeScript as a peer dependency and wraps TSC so that we can type check view single file components and TS files together from the command line. Um, the reason that we provide this is because um, in the past, for example, with the view CLI setup, um, we use a Webpack plugin, Webpack loader to type check our view components while we are building the application. Uh, so we do this even during the de development. And uh, so, so re in reality, when we do this, it actually slows down the development experience and build process by quite a lot because when you have a file that is being processed and we have to wait for the type checking for that file to complete before we can move the whole transform pipeline further. So um, with the new build tool ID setup, our new recommendation is when we use Vite, we uh, Vite performs only transpiling for TypeScript files. So, for example, when you edit a file when you're building, um, Vite itself doesn't do type checking. It only transpiles your TypeScript into plain JavaScript. This allows Vite to move as fast as possible and leverage all the native performance that's provided by ES Build. Um, and then, if you need additional type checking, you can run Vue TSC in a parallel process. Um, so that it can, um, so that we 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 essentially divide the work of building and transpiling, and type checking into two separate processes. Uh, and during development, because um, Volar already provides all the IntelliSense in your IDE, most times you don't even need to run Vue TSC on the side. You only need to run it in CI or during build. Vue TSC also recently shipped the feature uh, ability to generate DTS definitions for Vue single file components. So if you use TypeScript inside Vue components, you can now use Vue TSC to generate def type definition files. So for example, if you author a component library using single file components, you can now generate DTS files for those components without having to author them manually. This allows the consuming uh, uh, consuming developers who are also using TypeScript to be able to get accurate type definitions from your library. And it's based on the same diagnostics from Volar, so you'll get the exact same type of errors as you would see in your IDE. Uh, I, I want to also mention, so uh, although Volar is, um, is a VS Code extension, um, it does implement the language service protocol. So it's possible to use the underlying diagnostics in other IDEs or editors as well. Uh, we've seen community members already leveraging it in NeoVim. Um, so, but it could be a bit challenging. So we're, we're looking to see whether we can uh, include these community integrations uh, in our documentation as well. Uh, if you're really not into VS Code, um, JetBrains IDE's WebStorm has been following along uh, with all the latest features in Vue as well, and they're providing really decent support as well. So that could be a viable option too. Okay, next is state management, right? So um, many people have asked, with Vue 3, is Vuex really still necessary? So here, for simple cases without server-side rendering, Really, a reactive object should do the job in a lot of cases. If you want more structures, you can, um, if you want it, you can even get this working with SSR uh, if you use provide inject to always inject a new reactive object for each request from your app root. Now, uh, of course, uh, a simple reactive object has its limitations and you can't really easily debug it with dev tools. So, um, for more advanced use cases, we our new recommendation is Pina. So Pina is um, 
a state management library created by Eduardo, who also is the maintainer of View Router. Um, everyone probably know, right? So um, the, the thing about Pina is that it's designed based on the ideas for Vuex Next. So um, when we were discussing what the next iteration of Vuex could look like, right? Some of the important problems that we want to solve is first, it needs to play nice with uh, Composition API. The second is it could be lighter and simpler because a lot of the uh, a lot of the reactivity features are already available in Vue three itself, and and the most important part is it needs to be type safe because um, one of the biggest gripes people uh, some users have had with Vuex in Vue three is they're using TypeScript, but Vuex uh, when you dispatch actions, a lot of them are not really type safe. Um, we don't have perfect type inference for Vuex stores. So to address all of these, right, uh, we had discussions and uh, Eduardo uh, was actively involved in those discussions and eventually Pina is essentially based on these ideas and it's a um, exploration of what Vuex could look like. And it turns out to be working really great and Eduardo has been doing a really, really great job in adding DevTools integration, code, making it code splitting friendly so that you can have multiple stores um, and it also plays nice with server-side rendering. So, um, so for Vue 3 new projects, especially if you need TypeScript, Pinia would be the better option than the current implementation of UX. And speaking of DevTools integration, we also have the new DevTools extension. So DevTools 6 has been in beta channel for quite a while. Uh, Again, Guillaume has been doing an excellent job in, in making the new version work for both Vue 2 and Vue 3. Um, the, the component inspector even now supports uh, in-place editing, so you can edit the state of a, comp being a component that's being inspected right in the DevTools to see how it would uh, behave with different props or different state. Um, it also has multi-app support because in Vue 3 you can uh, you can launch multiple apps, uh, even with different versions of Vue on the same page. Uh, the DevTools can support those too. It also features a unified timeline. So this is similar to the performance timeline in the Chrome DevTools, where uh, here the DevTools will consolidate mouse events, keyboard events, these native events, also component custom events, and performance profiling uh, in the same timeline. Now, um, so here the screenshot demonstrates uh, a performance profiling section where we are uh, seeing a flame chart when we click a button and toggle a page. So you can look at the flame chart and see which component is taking up the most rendering or patch time. And it also allows libraries to add their own plugins. For example, uh, we didn't have to hard code PNES support into the DevTools itself. Instead, Pinia ships its own DevTools plugin uh, in its own runtime library. So um, you can you can even toggle permissions for each plugin inside your DevTools directly. Um, and once what so you don't actually need to install it through the DevTools. When you load Pinia in your app on the page, it automatically registers. The, the DevTools plugin for you. So you don't need to do anything, just use PNA and automatically it'll register itself in view DevTools. And this is the result you see in the timeline view. Now we have an additional PNA layer. And when you dispatch actions from your PNA store, you'll see them uh, displayed here. And you can see the uh, event information and all that, similar to how we used to see with Vuex events in, in view DevTools. So uh, VX4 also has the same integration. OK, so um, to sum up, we will, when you create a brand new project with Vue 3 uh, in the in, in next year, the new default recommendations is first, um, we're switching from Vue CLI to create Vue. Uh, you can, in fact, try it now with npm init Vue at next. Um, so to give us some early feedback, the IDE extension, uh, we would recommend switching from Vitor to Volar. The two doesn't really play very well nice together. So if you're switching to Volar, you need to disable Vitor. 
And then for state management, we recommend Pioneer as the new default. And there are some new online playgrounds if you want to play with Vue 3 as well. So the SFC playground at sfc.vuejs.org. This is the new recommended place for uh, creating minimal reproductions. If you have especially a lot of bugs that can be demonstrated with a single component, this is the easiest and best way to send us bug reports uh, because we can, um, you can share the resulting uh, snippet with a direct link. Uh, the, the your code is actually encoded in the URL, so you can send it direct, include it, it directly in your uh, in, in the issue report. Um, and we can also the playground also give us a direct inspection into the compiled code output. So it is very valuable for providing bug reports. Now, if your bug report involves a more full uh, build tool chain that can only reproduce when you are actually building something with with Vite. Uh, then you can use StackBlitz, which runs Vite, the actual Vite, inside your browser. So again, this is uh, this is really fast because it doesn't need to start a virtual machine on the remote server to to run the build process. It actually does it right in your browser. So, but it is still running the real deal. It's running the real Vite. So, um, if you you have a bug reproduction that requires a build step. Uh, Staplets would be the ideal way to provide reproductions for us. Okay, so then we get into the new composition API DX. Um, the most important thing is um, script setup that we shipped in 3.2. Uh, one of the reasons for this is when we first introduced composition API, we realized that the the overall DX wasn't that great, especially when you had to manually nest things in a setup component. Uh, you have to manually return everything from the setup function. So script setup greatly reduces boilerplate for composition API usage, also makes uh, component registration a lot a lot simpler. And we believe this is a great improvement to overall DX, especially when using composition API in single file components. And so in the future, especially in our documentation and our code examples, uh, we will be using script setup by default if we're using composition API. And finally, to tie all these things together, right? We talked about a lot of new stuff. So essentially, we need to come up with a coherent recommendation for these new best practices and new uh, options. So. We need the new documentation to tie these things together. And that is uh, something that we are, we've been working on for the past few months, and it's coming soon. The brand new Vue.js.org um, comes with dark, uh, with, a, with a dark theme, with a brand new design. Um, it is completely rebuilt on VitePress. So VitePress is a status site generator based on Vue 3 and Vite. If you've used ViewPress, then VitePress is essentially the next ViewPress. Um, so ViewPress was built with Vue 2 plus Webpack, and VitePress is built with Vue 3 and Vite. Uh, it provides a significantly, significantly better development experience compared to ViewPress. Um, also, much better end performance when you deploy, build and deploy the site. Um, our new website our new site is uh, actually very performant, despite having some pretty uh, interesting interactiveness uh, on top of static content. Um, so the new website will contain updated recommendations and best practices and restructure learning paths. Um, the main guide has many parts rewritten, and the most important thing is the new documentation will have the ability for you to toggle between options and uh, options API and composition API at any time, uh, and it also remembers that option uh, inside using local storage. So the the whole guide is in fact written with both code examples for both APIs, and you can opt to see only one of them at one time. So you can learn the whole thing with only options API, or you can learn the whole thing with only composition API, or you can toggle between them to, to see the difference and better understand how they are actually 
uh, connected at the conceptual layer. All the examples are also available in both API styles. And again, you can toggle between them at any time. Um, we also rewritten, we also rewrote the introduction and framework overview so that we have uh, a better understanding of what are the new best recommendations for all these tooling that we just mentioned. Uh, we're also working on a new tutorial for those who prefer hands-on learning. Um, so a lot of new content um, and a great, a lot of a lot of new content, a lot of restructuring. And overall, we want to uh, use this opportunity to to tie all the things that we worked on in the past year together as a brand new uh, representation of the framework. So um, with that said, when the docs are ready, it is also going to be the time where we do the final switch. We'll be switching from view two to view three. So view three will become the new default and that will include um, we will redirect Vue.js.org default to the new documentation. So the current Vue 2 documentation will be moved to v2.vue.js.org. We will also move the npm latest tag to point to Vue 3. Uh, the GitHub repos will still be kept separate. So uh, the main reason is that the two repositories have very different issue histories and a lot of Google results will link to specific issues. So we don't want to confuse use future users. So um, the best we can do is to keep them as their original repos, but rename Vue.js view next to uh, Vue.js slash core. OK, so that is all the way up to the new documentation. So all of these things that I mentioned are already done, and the documentation is also going to be shipped soon. Um, there are also something further on the roadmap that we've been sort of noodling around for a very long time um, that is maybe worth the attention. So the upcoming reactivity transform, it is currently still in RFC discussion stage, uh, but we've already done tons of research into this. And in short, with the reactivity transform, we're going to allow you to create reactive variables that can have that can trigger updates when they are uh, reassigned when they are mutated like this. So uh, instead of creating a plain ref, we use the dollar prefix version. So a dollar prefix version of a ref creating API will create a variable that is reactive but backed by an actual ref. So this is purely compile time sugar, um, and this solves one of the biggest complaints that we've received ever since we have introduced Composition API is that you have to use the dot value to access values of refs. Um, so the ref transform solves that, and more importantly, it makes our usage of refs consistent between templates and our script sections, right? Because in templates, we're kind of used to the auto unwrapping of refs, but we don't need to use dot value, but in the script section, we still need to do that. So with the ref transform, we can simply use it as variables anywhere. And this is the compilation result, right? On the on the left is the code that we write. On the right, uh, the compiler simply transforms into it into an actual ref call, and automatically change any place where we reference the variable with dot value. The transformation is really straightforward. So in short, dollar prefix version of ref creating methods will create reactive variables backed by refs. So, so any API that create refs, for example, ref itself, computed also returns a ref, so it will have that. Uh, some of the lesser used ones, for example, shallow ref or two ref, right? Um, they're probably less used, but uh, if it creates a ref, then it will have a dollar equivalent that can return variables instead. Um, so there are some additional edge cases where we need to solve with additional utility macros. For example, how do we destructure, uh, destructure from an object refs? How do we convert these reactive variables back into actual refs when we need to? So these are 
uh, we, we have thought through this and they are co also covered in the RFC. And here's an example. So you can, in fact, use these macros inside normal JavaScript functions, inside nested functions. Um, as you can see on the left, we have a use mouse composition function where we are using the reactive macros and declaring X and Y. Previously, we would declare them as normal refs, but here we're declaring them directly as variables, which means you can directly mutate them and they will actually still stay reactive. And when you expose them to the outside world, wrap them inside the double dollar function, which will preserve them as actual refs. And inside a component, we can consume external composition functions. Uh, the external composition function doesn't have to be written this way. For example, any composition function from the view use collection would support will, will be supported the same way. So the single dollar function allows us to destructure reactive variables out from an object containing refs. So this way, as you can see, the main difference between this transform and other, some of the other solutions is that first, it works in both view components and outside view components. It's a simple transform that can work anywhere in plain JS or TS, and it has 100% TypeScript compatibility. We have considered type inference to be a first class concern when we design these new transforms. Um, so to accompany this, we also have prop props to structure transform, right? So in script setup, when we call define props, one of the issues that we had is um, we can't destructure define props because previously, if we destructure it, we lose the reactivity connection to the original props object. In addition, when we are using the type-based define props declaration, it is a bit awkward to declare default values for it. Now, Using this syntax we're seeing here, right? We can actually apply some compile time transform so that this syntax would work reactively. So the destructor vari values will be compiled into uh, compiled into props.foo access, so it retains reactivity. The default values here will be compiled into equivalent default value declarations um, so that Vue will handle them properly. Which means you can actually use this syntax and get all the desired behavior, retain reactivity without have to go uh, door run hoops. And uh, for example, remembering to always access it as props.foo and then uh, find other ways to declare default values. So this will combine with the ref transform together. It will, we, we call in the term reactivity transform. And um, I'm in the process of unifying these ideas into a final RFC that we will consider. Uh, we'll probably try to um, gather more feedback and see if we can ship this as part of 3.3. And that is it. Thank you very much. That was incredible. I mean, can we get Done. some emoji claps in the uh, chat, please? Because Evan, can you hear us? So. Yes. Cool. I, I love the new docs feature that you can toggle between. That's going to be amazing. It's going to really help people uh, come on board. Really looking forward to seeing yeah. it. I have a question for you, though. Sure. What's it like in Singapore? Ah, it's great here. Um, it's really hot, as you can see. Um, and it rains every day. <laughs> That's a bit of a change. Great though. food. <laughs> I'm basically, I'm basically calling uh, delivery every day because, you know, I don't really feel like cooking. Um, but yeah, the only thing is uh, it's a bit tough because our kids are not going to school yet. So I still need to deal with them at home every day. So it's a bit tough getting the work hours in, but uh, I'm trying. I mean, the kids aren't going to school, but their dad's Evan Yu. Hello. <laughs> you know, I think they're going to be all right. What do you guys think in the chat? Uh, they're going to be good? Yeah. Um, good. <laughs> Evan, we want to thank you very much, first of all, for staying up this late. We realize that uh, the time zones aren't uh, as friendly as could be, but uh, for you to sort of, you know, kick it off, and, and, and again, we realize it's, it's pretty late. Uh, but 
We also have a, a, a session with you right now, so we're actually gonna send you off to the session taking place that I believe is going to be masterfully emceed by Tim Benix, uh, who's uh, mm -hmm. out there waiting for you. So anyone who wants to sort of uh, have further conversations with Evan, and I think he's gonna share some extra details there. So head off to these sessions uh, section. I think there's a tab potentially, yeah, it, it on the left-hand side, and that's taking place right now. So, uh, Evan, uh, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much for hanging out with us this morning, this evening, however you want to call it. Thanks, Evan. See you later. See ya. All right, cheers, cheers.